Welcome back. One of my favorite musical artists is Sting. He seems to have written scores of songs that are significant for me, the message within. He seems to be more than a musical art artist, but also a poet and can put things into words. But one of his popular pop songs from over 40 years ago was um, We Are Spirits in the Material World. And it was a, almost a number one hit. And it had a message that was just driven home with a funky pop beat. But we're spirits in a material world. And sometimes those of us who are playing the spiritual game, we hear the phrase, I'm a spiritual being having a material existence. But if that's true and it resonates so deeply with us and we believe it to be the case, then what would it actually mean? And perhaps the differential would be the difference in quality of, a, of experience of somebody living a spiritual life versus living, what's the opposite of a spiritual life? A material life. It's two ends of a spectrum, I guess you might say. We could be living more of a spiritual life or we could be living more of a material life and maybe it doesn't need to be one or the other maybe it could be a satisfying ratio of them but it would seem to be the case that most people define and live toward one end of the scale and if we're spiritual beings what would that mean for us and the topic this week is the power of intention attention being the god-given faculty that we're all given to use the simple and beautiful, extraordinary, subtle quality of our own attention, what we pay attention to, to bring into view, to actually participate and create the experience that surrounds us. Now in the material world, the feeling is different. The material world, we feel more separate, more isolated, more disconnected. And from that smaller point of view, looking out into a larger world, we see what we like and we do, we grab. There's a tendency for material people thinking that they're a thing to reach out and to grab the things that they like. There's also a tendency to find the things that we don't like, to see the things we don't like and try to push them away or to eliminate them or to altogether eliminate them from our reality. So there's this grabbing going on and then there's this pushing going on. And then that becomes exhausting. Also, when we're grabbing for things, there are other people, there's a sense that other people are grabbing for the same thing. And there's a limited amount of those things. Then competition breaks out and we're frequently operating in collision with others because everybody, everybody wants, everybody wants some, so to speak, to quote Van Halen from 40 years ago. And also, there's this tendency as material beings to see the things in the world that we don't like, the people, the politics, the ideas, the culture, whatever it is that we don't like, and to push against it. So the suggestion this week is simply to remind ourselves as spiritual beings, we're infinitely more powerful creators and manifestors by using this great, subtle, internal quality called paying attention. It's so much more subtle. If you were to aim a camera at Yosemite, the camera lens does not need to reach out and grab Yosemite and pull it in to its interior. It simply looks at it and then includes it. And this is the great gift as we awaken this spiritual, subtle quality of paying attention. What we pay attention to increases in our own experience. And what we withdraw our attention from decreases in our experience. And again, as mentioned yesterday, this may be the hardest yet most important lesson we learn in this phase of our development as spiritual beings on this earth, which is clearly a blend of the spiritual and the material. But as we begin to awaken and remember this great quality of spiritual creation that's within us, we can begin to pay very close attention to what we pay attention to. Paying attention, we're spending our attention on something. If we're spending our attention on something that we don't like, thinking that we're going to make it go away, we're committing a serious category error. We're actually bringing more of that into our life. And if we're clutching and grabbing at the things we want, 
there's a great deal of struggle. And even if we do manage to catch it and reel it in, we have to hold on to it with all of our might. Doesn't it make more sense? And of course, this is a first, first person communication to myself to engage that great spiritual quality, which says we're made in the image of God. What we look at, what we speak and how we vibrate, what we pay attention to becomes our reality. And as we do this more and more and get better and better, we'll become far more influential in the world. We'll get way more done with way less effort and we'll enjoy it a great deal more. And other people will clamor to us and wonder, how did you do that? How did you shift from being a grabber and a pusher and become an influencer? Well, you'll just remind them, resist not evil, and you'll be uniquely qualified to do so. See you tomorrow.